Alrighty, what's up guys? Matt here from Loon Outdoors, and today we're trying a super fun little October caddis. Um, in the vise is a size 8 551. Now, it doesn't matter if you buy it from A-Rex or Firehole Sticks, because their wide gap jig hook is both a 551. So, as long as you can remember those three numbers, you'll be good to go. Um, both of them are barbless, both of them are really wide gapped and this happens to be a size 8 with a 4.0 mil matte brown tungsten bead which Firehole calls mounds. Um, so like I said this is a uh, little October Callus Emerger. I'm using Vivas 50D and uh, precision tip scissors for the win on my trout flies. Um, so first up, this will sound kind of odd but October caddis are orange, but I'm going to use some ice dub UV tan. It's ICE 369. It's one of my favorite colors of ice dub, and just bought another package of it because I was running out. Um, so, what you're going to want to do here is take a solid amount of strands. And, and by that, you can count them if you want, but you want it to be a hearty pinch of ice dub. So when you get it, it's going to look pretty big. And then I'm just going to slowly cut it. It's going to look really, really kind of bulbous, but we're going to trim it out just a little bit, keep the length. October caddises are pretty massive. Um, and so what this is actually going to give us is kind of like this thicker, denser body up front with a fade to a lighter color um, as the bug gets narrower. Um, so next up, this is a, a little dubbing brush that I made on a dubbing brush machine. Um, when I'm tying a lot of October caddis or any pattern for that fact, I'll make these up. There's a ton of videos out there. We're not going to cover it in this one. But it's uh, Cinnamon Caddis uh, Hair's Ear cinnamon caddis STS trilobal that I chop up really short and a little bit of white ice dub actually with green hue seems to work well for me um, so it has kind of this gelatinous look from the hair and the STS trilobal fibers and then uh, the, the shimmer and flash that you want of a pupating caddis fly um, so I just kind of build these out so I can quickly and easily create flies. And I just chop them into manageable little sections. And I want this to be mostly body because I'm going to use that brown bead kind of as the, the part of the head system and everything there. And once we get down in here, We'll go ahead and pin that in. And I'll do a bunch of securing wraps. I don't really cross, I don't really come back in and back rib this. Um, it actually gets a really, really cool look to it when it when it gets wet. I posted a picture on my Instagram of it. And the the density of where you've created the dubbing brush actually like creates that that gelatinous core effect that you would see on a real caddis. Um, so this is like a, a rust colored CDC feather. Um, October caddis aren't really super dark all throughout their body. Um, again, we're just kind of working on that color variation or segmentation, if you will, um, working forward. I don't put wings on this or anything. Um, I just wrap the CDC. going forward. Um, you can see I just tied the tip in, left it in there. It doesn't make a difference. It's like a guide fly for me. Um, crank these things out really quickly. And I get a little heavy on the uh, on the CDC. I think it gives it um, a lot of good movement in the water, but also um, it's just a great looking fiber for those fish to uh, latch on to. So you can see we've gone from light to medium, working darker now. 
So next up for me is, uh, this is like legit bronze mallard. If you just have some mallard dyed brown, that works great too. Um, I do like, um, I just do like the authentic. It's a little bit more expensive, but when you're only using two barbules per fly, it's well worth it to me. So these guys are real sticky. They don't want to separate. And so you can see I have the antennas kind of curved backwards. Now I'm going to tie these in upside down. Everybody says I tie my flies upside down, but most of the time I just see bugs moving and rotating and kind of rolling throughout the river when I've snorkeled it. And I don't find that it makes a difference and I don't have to deal with the hook gap. So it makes my tying easier and the trout don't seem to mind. So next up we just have a piece of brown ostrich and I'm just going to tie this in. There's a V side so I'm going to put the V I'm going to continuously wrap so the V ends up towards the back. And you'll see what I'm talking about here. That one did not set the way I wanted it to. There we go. So V towards the back best as you can. If you don't get it right, that's fine. You're going to push it back with a bunch of dubbing. And you're just going to kind of build a really good little collar here. And once we get up front here, I do a few securing wraps, wrap back over that, push that collar back again. We're building a gradient here. Um, I know the bead's brown. We could use a black bead too, I guess. I just started fishing it with brown. I got excited about this bead. Um, and this is a little bit of ice dub uh, peacock black. It's one of the like trifectas of awesome ice dub colors that I just believe in. Gives me confidence and makes me feel like I'm gonna catch a fish every time I have the fly in the water with the with this color. Um, so we'll do a few whip finishes. I don't use a whip finisher, um, but you might. And I'll go ahead and trim right there. And that's that's actually like the completed fly. And as this fly gets wet everything just lays back and looks gelatinous and juicy and over the last few years try to really keyed in and uh, this is great under an indicator you can actually swing it it does swing properly even though it's on a jig hook I've swung it on little trout spades and stuff with good success um, also you could high stick this or use a competition rig if you will um, but yeah guys just a little fun October caddis pattern thanks for watching